Is happening, people. It is Brian Alls with NeverSafe.com, and welcome to part two of the exercise specific conditioning program free thing. I don't really know what I'm gonna call this, but yep, you did hear correctly. This is part two. In part one, we covered the bench press and some exercise specific conditioning sessions that you can do after your main strength work on that day. If you guys do need to go check that out, go to the description box down below where I'm gonna have links to that video as well as a lot of other related videos and of course the timestamps. If you guys are new to this channel, I tried to add timestamps to my most recent videos just so that you guys don't need to be searching around for things. If you guys need some information, you can get it immediately. Now, if you guys did see part one of that last video, then I would encourage that you check out the timestamps and jump forward because right now I'm going to go into a quick explanation of what this whole conditioning type of thing is and what people can expect. And yes, by the way, I hijacked my wife's ring light talking setup for her YouTube channel, so that's why I look better. Than normal. And if you're still here, then I'm going to go ahead and assume that you did not watch the first part in this series. So you're going to need a little bit of background of what this is all about. And all that this encapsulates is basically 10 hard minutes of conditioning at the end of your strength day. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you're going to get in on a normal gym day, do your strength work, do some sort of volume, then assistance, and then you might maybe do some sort of like core or conditioning or pretty much jump on a treadmill and just run for 20 minutes. So all that I'm going to do is give you guys some better options that are going to be much tougher to be honest so you're going to be able to build some mindset but number two it's exercise specific so you're also going to be able to work on weak points of your main lift that you hit that day and all the conditioning exercises are going to be based around the same type of movements and body parts that have already been worked because there's absolutely nothing worse than getting a hard conditioning session in and then one or two days later having to go in and squat and then finding out that your legs are still tired and heavy and that the conditioning took away from your actual strength work so to recap this is going to go at the end of your workout it's going to be approximately 10 minutes it's going to have to do with the weak points or very similar exercise and body parts to what you've already worked that day. It's going to make you leaner. It's going to make you stronger. It's going to make you more athletic, less prone to injury. It's going to help your heart. It's going to make you not have a stroke. It's going to do great things for you. And it's only 10 minutes at the end of your strength stuff. So without further ado, let's jump into these. All right. So if you guys have been a fan of the channel for any amount of time, you will know that I have some absolute brutal endings to my leg days. I think probably the worst out of all of them are the Bring Sally Up front squats where you just turn on Moby's Flower and then you follow the song with a front squat and it's absolutely terrible, but I'm not trying to get you guys to that level here today. Today we're gonna to do things a little bit more mild. The very first one that we're going to do is probably going to be the most intense and for that reason, hopefully you will last 10 minutes, but if you do not, you're just trying to get into this one as far as you possibly can. Make it through minute one, then make it through minute two, minute three, minute four, just continue to go on as long as you can until you cannot, but if you do make that 10 minutes, then cap it off. Okay, hello, hello Kona. Hello, do you, do you like learning about squats? But that said, the focus of this very first one is gonna be extremely posterior chain as well as core dominant. So you're gonna be doing your squats with something out in front of you. Now, I don't care if you choose to go with a front squat or if you can't do that, you can go to a zercher squat or you can front squat a stone or a sandbag or a person or you can do anything you want as long as you are holding that weight out in front of you. Now, once you have whatever implement that you're going to use set, what I want you to do is take each minute and break it into 15 second sections. So for that first 15 seconds, I want you to get as many reverse lunges as possible. I want you to go flat out, just left side, right side, left side, right side. Get as many as you can in that 15 seconds. As soon as that is over, switch over to a regular squat. So in this example, we're using the Zercher squat. So right from the lunges into 15 seconds of your squat. From there, you have 15 seconds of just holding that weight out in front of you. Now, if you do this correctly, you did a lot of reps. The basic idea here is that your posterior chain and your core are going to be very, very tired and weak and they're going to be shaking around and you're going to have to hold position just by holding that thing. So 15 seconds of a hold after that, you have 15 seconds rest. Which is essentially like 15 seconds of that bar not pushing on your stomach trying to force everything out. As far as the weight and intensity goes, I would stay probably around 50% of your one rep maximum of whatever variation that is that you chose to use for this workout. Now, it might start out pretty easy with these 15 second sections and uh, trust me, it's going to catch up very, very quickly. So uh, when I say last as long as you can, if you can make it 10 minutes, absolutely make it 10 minutes. If you can't, make it as far as you can or at least one more minute 
further than you thought you could. And the second exercise specific workout thing that I would encourage you to do is something that everyone should be doing at some point. Virtually every single gym around now has a sled. If you do not have a sled, go grab an old tire and a rope. You can make yourself a sled. I've talked about the benefits of sled work time and time again, and I'm pretty sure most of you are doing some sort of it in your training, but a lot of people don't know what to do. So very, very basic here. At top every minute for 10 minutes, meaning that every single time that that hand comes back around to the 12, it's time for you to go. And all that you're gonna do is on the sled, whether you push, pull, whatever type of sled you have access to, travel with it 50 feet, turn around, travel back. So 100 total feet in the minute, you get the remainder of the minute to rest. If you do that, trust me, that alone is an absolute brutal, brutal workout. But I almost don't even wanna consider it in these because it's just so simple, but it's just such a thing that you should be doing. It'd be good if you incorporate that. Which brings us right to the third exercise specific conditioning session that I wanna talk about. And for this one, you're just going to need one barbell in the rack. Now, you can use whatever exercises here that are gonna address the weak points of your squat, and that is absolutely amazing. But stick to exercise that you can do one bar and a similar weight for, because you're not gonna have time to swap weights on and off. The entire point of this is to really just get a deep, deep burn and then decide to go before you want to go. So all they're gonna do is take that one single bar and load it with a weight that you can do a good morning with for approximately eight to 12 reps. Once you have that weight set, that is the weight that you're gonna use for the entirety of these exercises. So you're gonna perform eight good mornings and then immediately perform eight Bulgarian split squats each side. No rest between exercises, you're literally going one directly into the other. But once you complete all of your Bulgarian split squats, now I want you to move on to a close stance or a deadlift stance box squat. But all you're really doing here is taking your normal squat stance and then bringing your feet in to about your conventional deadlift stance and you're performing your squats from there. And again, you have eight reps here, but as you can see, you're gonna start out with a good morning, move on to Bulgarian split squat, moving on to the deadlift stance box squat. So your exercise get a little bit easier as far as weight is concerned. So as long as you stick with a good weight that you can use for good mornings, then you should be pretty much okay here. Now the fun part. And here comes the hard part of why it's actually gonna be conditioning. So you're gonna do eight good mornings to eight Bulgarian split squats each side to eight deadlift stance box squats and then you're gonna finish that with a 40 second wall sit. Now technically the wall sit is your rest, but you can look at it also like a poker game. That's your buy-in to get to the next set. Cause after you've done eight, eight, eight wall sit, now you need to do six, six, six reps of each of those exercises. Wall sit, four, four, four reps, then two, two, two reps and you're done. But every single time you get done all your reps, you do have that 45 second wall sit chaser. Now ideally you will finish this way before that 10 minutes is up. If you do not just cut it at 10 minutes and stop wherever, trust me, you probably got plenty of really, really good work stopping where you are. Which brings us to the fourth exercise specific conditioning session. And for this one, we're gonna be using tempo squats. Now, I don't know if you guys know what tempo squats are, but basically you're doing squats in slow motion to a tempo of whatever tempo it is. And a lot of people are gonna say, well, you're not really moving very fast there. You're not really, doing a whole lot, how's that conditioning? And it's basically conditioning because your body is suffering under load for a long period of time. However, just to make sure that you get to that point, we're going to kind of jumpstart it with a little something beforehand. Now, since we did agree to keep this to 10 minutes, we are going to be doing one minute of work, one minute of rest, four or five rounds. Now, for each one of your work minutes, it's gonna be broken up into 15 seconds and 45 seconds. The first 15 seconds is gonna be spent sprinting with a sled or doing burpees or doing something extremely tough. Basically something that'll make your heart rate explode in about 10 to 15 seconds. Then for the remaining 45 seconds of the minute, you are doing nothing but tempo squats. Now, as far as weight on the bar, I would keep it somewhere between 40 and 60%, depending on what you're using the dishing for that day. However, uh, that 45 seconds of tempo squats is going to seem like a brutally, brutally long time. But the good news is once it's over, you get a minute of rest. Now, if you truly do hate yourself, you can spend that minute in a plank position or doing some other dumb thing that you want to do because it is conditioning after all, and conditioning is full of really, really stupid ideas. However, when that clock kicks back around and your minute of rest is over, then you have 15 seconds of full-blown burpees or full-blown sled sprints, full-blown whatever, and do 45 seconds of tempo squats again. Now, as far as tempo goes, you do what you think is right, my friend. The reality situation is that the seconds that you are counting in your head are nowhere near real actual seconds. So if you're gonna have a partner count for you, what I personally like to do is a four second descent all the way down to the hole. Once I'm in the hole, I will try to hold there for four seconds and then I will ascend for four seconds, right? So 
pretty much going back up for me personally is the hard part to stay slow at. I can drop slow, I can stay in the bottom all day, but when I try to bring things up slowly, I really, really do not like it. I typically get back up top, rebreathe, rebrace, and then drop back in for my next one. But I go on like a four second type of tempo. But again, four seconds in my head probably is like 1.1 seconds in reality. Yours is too. Which brings me to number five, which is going to be our final exercise specific conditioning session. And like promised guys, I like to stick a body weight thing here at the end because I truly believe that body weight is a great way to absolutely smoke yourself pretty much in a more safe-ish sort. I get that. Ah, nothing is safe. But I do believe that when you're extremely exhausted, you will mess yourself up less on a bodyweight squat than you would with a barbell on your back. So uh, here at the end, these are called leg blasters, all right? Now, again, join friends, join enemies, join pay people to come hang out with you, do what you need to do in your personal situation. However, once you are all gathered around, what I want you to do is 20 squats, just regular old, all the way down, all the way up, hit 20 squats. As soon as you're done your 20 squats, do 20 stepping lunges. Once you're done your 20 stepping lunges, do 20 jumping lunges. Once you're done 20 jumping lunges, do 10 jumping squats. Now, do it again. And again. And again. And again. And again. You have 10 minutes of this. This level of intensity is something different than you might expect, and it's something so simple that you could do on the beach if you're on vacation, in a hotel room, in a gym in a hotel. You could do it absolutely Anywhere that you want to, you can do leg blasters, and every single time, they will make you cry like a little tiny baby. Anyway, you can play as many rounds as you can in that 10 minutes, and trust me, uh, you'll see a lot of people bent over in kind of a standing fetal position, just rubbing their quads vigorously. All right, guys, so there you go. That is part two of the body-specific conditioning free workout session things, all right? Uh, next one's probably going to be overhead press or the deadlift, I'm not really sure where my brain wants to go. If you guys want to leave in the comment section down below, if you would rather see one or the other, that'd be awesome. Uh, I want to thank to my wife, Elena, for letting me use her little ring light so that I could just focus on my workout today at the gym instead of recording them work out in dogs and craziness. So uh, thank you very much, sweetie. I thank you guys so much for absolutely everything you do. That got weird fast. To you, the viewer, I thank you absolutely for everything that you do to help support me. The programs, the t-shirts, the watching the videos, the liking, the subscribing, the sharing, all of it is absolutely amazing. I thank you so much. I will catch up with you guys later in the week. Until I do, go out to something amazing in your lives. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. Please be nice. I'll see you then.